Hello and happy Tuesday. I'm Katie Sevenance and you are joining us on Business by Design Online. We are here to help you start a business, grow your business, no matter what type of business you have. Our tips from the top interview series is one of my all time favorite things that I've been doing now because I get to learn from some of the most amazing women who are out there successful in their business and they're willing to share some of their tips their successes, and sometimes even their struggles along the way. So my guest today is Brenda Sturr, who is absolutely amazing. Let me bring her up so you can meet her as well. Now, I feel like I know Brenda really well because I watch her all the time. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. We are, um, our, our community is women of all ages, all backgrounds, doing all kinds of types of businesses, but entrepreneurs who sometimes, and especially this year, I find, get a little stuck. Their business might be a little stale right now. And so I know that you specialize in direct sales and helping women be online and having a lot of success online. Um, would you share a little bit about how you got started and, and what your what is your business? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, Katie, thank you for inviting me to join this morning. I uh, I live in Phoenix and um, I got out of bed about 20 minutes ago. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. So actually, no, I have two kids um, and today is the start for one of them. She hasn't started until noon today. Uh, so the other one we were, we do morning drop off, we do carpool. The other one literally is in the house watching Netflix. And I'm here's me yelling, I have an interview, don't come bother me. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's life, working from home. That's what we all do, right? Home, right? This is what we do. Uh, so my name is Brenda Sturr. I, um, I'm a social marketing business coach. I work primarily with direct sellers and network marketers. And my whole goal is to help small business owners, primarily women, um, market and make money online in non spammy ways. So we all know people who are, uh, you know, I call them spammy pammies. <laughs> So they're like, uh, you know, hey girl, want to join my team? I haven't talked to you in 20 years or I never talked to you ever. And they give direct sales a bad name. So what ends up happening is um, we end up with these mindset issues that we're not in authentic businesses. We're not, but you know, my money is so green girls. Let's like, right. If we do this well, um, our products serve clients, communities, ideal clients. And we really have a way to help, um, you know, bring value to our families, whether someone has a goal of making $200 a month or multi thousand dollars a month, direct mm -hmm. sales is a really fantastic task to do that when we do it well. The challenge is, is that a lot of direct sales companies, um, they focus on, pardon me, selling, but not marketing and they're different. Yeah. Marketing is not the same thing as selling. Selling is the transactions, the end, the end result of a great marketing campaign. So what, what, what they don't teach though is marketing and marketing is all about how do you identify your ideal client? How do you warm up? How do you create value? How do you create relationship? How do you build no like and trust? And in 2020, when the whole pivot has been, well, there is no in-person options. We have to be online, which means a hundred percent of my focus has been, let's talk about great marketing. Um, because I've been busier than ever this year. It's been, it's been insane. You know, I love because you really, you took, I know you stopped and you were like, okay, wait, we got to refocus and really hit this hard because we right. serve communities who are now working primarily online. So um, you really have put together an amazing plan. I jumped in on it. I, I'll be totally honest because I've, my direct sales I've had for 18 years and I, got connected to you from another distributor in my business who said, Oh my gosh, you got to follow what she's doing. It's amazing. I signed up like a year ago and didn't really do anything. I felt like I couldn't put one more thing in. I just followed a couple things. Mm -hmm. And then finally this year, I don't know what it was that got my attention. And I just, I have been on a mission and I following as much as I possibly can. I'm like, I, why am I paying this and not doing it? And I love it. Yesterday going, um, uh, it was yesterday, the day before I was, I was asking um, my team, it's like, okay, 
when did Katie join? How long is she involved? When did she join the group? Is she on the new website? And so I like, cause I wanted to know exactly how far in, you know, you and I have been working together. So. Right, right. Not very. I haven't been, I'm one of those who was like, I love training. I love personal development. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Always be learning and growing. Exactly. And so I have been telling my team like every day, okay, here's another new thing we'll do. Here's another new thing we're doing. And, well, and it can be very overwhelming, right? And yeah. that's the challenge for direct sellers. The majority of direct sellers are part-timers. The majority of direct sellers are making $500 or less per month. Um, and they, you know, there's a gajillion ideas out there. How do you build funnels and how do you do marketing and how do you do warm up and engagement content and how do you, uh, what should I be posting every day and how do I be consistent? What tools should I be on? There's a million different messages that are coming at direct sellers who primarily have um, a limited amount of time because they're working full time, they have full time mm -hmm. families, they have full time jobs, and the majority don't have a lot of time to invest. So my goal is I try to cut through that and make yeah. a really crystal clear path. So you're not trying to do a bajillion things at once. The catch 22 is this. When someone joins a direct sales company or any new company, when you start a new business, what ends up happening is you get a ton of advice coming at you, what you should be doing, um, your brand, your upline, all the online coaches you might follow. There's a million things you should be doing, right? And yeah. We're overwhelmed, and we should all we. I someone coined the phrase, "We should all over ourselves," right? So what ends up happening is we get overwhelmed, paralyzed, and do nothing. Right. So what I try to do is I kind of try to cut through that noise and um, have a very clear path on what you do in the right order, because that actually is what builds your confidence as well as makes you early money, makes you get some of those open. Because when you start making money that becomes its own little engine to be able to roll forward. So it's it's exciting when we see people have success, right? Our goal is yeah. to be successful on whatever terms are your own success. You know, I love it because um, yes, it's it can be very overwhelming and I think we're all reaching for more information, but getting clear and that's one of the things why I want to have you on today because you get right to the point. You don't mess around. I don't you know what it is. <laughs> And you have these, really easy, <laughs> but you have really simple steps to take. So yeah. before we get into all that, tell us how did you get started? Because I know your background is in um, corporate technology, right? So how did you get started doing this? So when I was in my, uh, so I'm from Wisconsin, go Packers. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Seahawks uh, fan, so you know. You're a what fan? Seahawks. Oh, we're both in the NFC, so I'll allow it. So. <laughs> but um, so I grew up in Wisconsin, and I went to, I was very much on a traditional trajectory. I went to college, I went to grad school, I got a corporate job, and I followed the corporate path. And I was in my early 40s, and I had progressed, progressed, promote, 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 and followed the corporate trajectory. And I was 42, and had, I was a senior vice president in a technology company in Wisconsin and had a giant department, a giant budget. I was traveling 50% of the time for um, my job. I was supporting financial technology, so my customers were banks. And guess what? Bank of America never calls you when things are going well. They call you when their million dollar deposit files don't get. So my job was really stressful. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought this is just sort of what middle, you know, your 40s are like. You, you're just stressed out all the time because this is what your, your life is. I had two young kids at the time. They were three and one. Now they're 10 and 12. Um, and I sort of was just burned out. So what ended up happening was I ended up joining a direct sales company because it wasn't my day job. It was cheaper to buy the kit than it was to pay retail. Mm -hmm. I was a traditional kidnapper. I'm a big fan of your kidnappers. Um, <laughs> and what might happen? Um, so I was a kidnapper. I was cheaper to pay retail or cheaper to buy the kit than pay retail. I had zero intention of doing anything with it. I was very much of an anti-direct sales, anti-MLM person. I didn't go to grad school to sell jewelry in ladies' living rooms. This was my this was sort of my mindset. And um, but I started wearing and sharing. I started talking about it. I was telling people to buy the kit because it was cheaper than paying retail. I thought I had discovered some secret backdoor, like I'm totally gonna like get everybody into a kit because it's cheaper. Well, suddenly I started making side money. And I was like, well, I'm actually building a team and I'm making money. And now I've got the 
side thing. Well, if I'm going to do the side thing, I better do it well. The type A in me is like, I'm going to do it well. So I was still traveling for my full-time job. What, was, uh, what happened then was I made the decision pretty early that if I was going to do this little side direct sales business, I was going to do it on my own terms because I was already traveling 50% of the time. I was going to do it online. I didn't want to be gone evenings and weekends more than I already was. So I made the decision to do it online. So I threw myself into building an online presence, which was Facebook. Pinterest was new at the time. This was maybe nine years ago. Uh, I built a blog. I figured it all out. I kind of like said, well, I don't know the first thing about YouTube, but I guess I should figure out how to do YouTube videos. So I sort of threw myself into it kind of like a corporate project because by now I was making a little money and realized, well, every part of my side thing is leveraging all these skills I've developed as a corporate executive. I was doing customer service. I was doing technology production. I was figuring out operations. I was doing customer service. I was doing all the things that were my corporate job. So um, within the first year, I'm the number one sponsor in the company. In the second year, I was the number one sponsor again. And this time I had three people from my team on stage with me in the top five. And then everyone was like, what are you doing that we're not doing? What are you doing differently? Yeah. People in the company started asking me if I could come train their teams. So I went to my company and I said, can I, am I able to do that? Can I charge them for my travel? Can I charge them for my time? And they're like, no, you can't monetize the field. You can't profit on the field. And I said, well, I'm going to go do my own thing and do it anyway. So I did. So I left. Awesome. I awesome. on this hypothesis that, okay, if I'm, if I'm doing this online and my team has recreated it, mm -hmm. then there's other people who want to learn this. And at the time, about six years ago, there were not a lot of direct sales groups that were teaching people other anything other than spray and pray marketing, which is like spray your link out and pray someone clicks on it, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's still a million of those spray and pray networking groups. Like drop your recruiting links. It's like no one's going to click on a random recruiting link. They're just not. So what ended up happening was um, I started my very first Facebook group with very much of a hypothesis that, okay, the only thing you're not allowed to do in my groups to this day is self-promote. You cannot share your links in my groups, which means you have to come into my groups with relationship, value, support, questions, cheerleading, things that will help other people that have a relationship-based foundation. So it grew very, very quickly. And then people, so my, my free Facebook group exploded to 100,000 people within two years. And so we were like, okay, People want to know how to do direct sales better. There's literally a market for this. So then people started asking me, well, can you coach my team? Can you, can you teach me how to do Facebook parties? Can you teach me how to do a blog? So we started creating a lot of content. And I was doing so much coaching. I was doing so much one-on-one -on -one coaching with individual leaders, consultants, and teams. That I, it, The irony was I had wanted to be home with my kids, right? I said, I don't want to travel. I'm going to be home when my kids are at home. I don't want to do evening and weekend events. And now here's me doing all of these evening and weekend coaching events. I'm right. like, I was in the house, but I was on the computer the whole time. So we made the decision. It was very arbitrary and very random. My husband said, you need to fix this because you're not having dinner with the family like ever. Because guess what? Direct sellers work during the day. They're able to do coaching calls at night. And I was missing right. with my family. So three and a half years ago, I formed um, very much without any strategy whatsoever, um, a private coaching community. And I, my, my strategy, my theoretical strategy was, well, I'm kind of having the exact same call with all these different clients. If I bring them all together, I can just talk to them once and they can support each other. And then there's community value. I can lower the price for everybody. And we have this community group and we'll call it a premium membership. I didn't know the first thing about running a membership. Well, that exploded to 3,000 people in a year. Wow. I didn't know the first thing about running a membership group, so I sort of overwhelmed everybody with content. And then we put structure in place and really created a very guided coaching program of how do you get over the mindset issues. When people start, the very first thing they're afraid of is annoying their friends and family. Right. The first thing they're afraid of is I don't want to be spammy and I don't want people to think badly of me or judge me. That's sort of, sort of you know, early mindset issues we got to work on. But then we find our value offering and we all figure out our, our messaging and we work on personal sales. 
okay, we've got to figure out a party strategy, a hosted strategy, a follow-up strategy. How am I actually going to make money in my personal business? And how do I keep that engine moving? Then we move into building our community. Well, building our community is, okay, I've got my personal engine. I've got my personal sales moving. How do I expand to new audiences? Maybe yeah. I need to expand on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, blogging, videos. Should I be doing lives? Should I work through partners? How should I expand my reach? And then once I'm expanding to new people, those people become part of my sales engine. I'm building my funnels and I'm continually bringing new people in that become part of my party engine, my hostess engine, and my personal follow-up engine. Then um, we move into sales and sponsoring. One of the big challenges in direct selling is that people, um, and we see, Katie, you know, you've, you've been around direct sales a really long time. You know this. Um, people are might be really, really good at sponsoring, but really lousy at training. Mm -hmm. so end up with, or really, really good at sales, but don't know how to sponsor. Right. Or we end up with people who, leaders who never communicate with their teams. We have homeless legs. We have legs of our business where we have these absentee leaders or accidental leaders where like she tripped into a position and has no idea what to do with her team, right? right. So we have a lot of those situations in this industry, but some of that can be mitigated because in direct selling, the challenge is that every single compensation plan in direct selling is based on volume and sponsoring. It's not competency based. It's not, are you ready to sponsor? Are you going to be right. able to train your team? So my model is built on sort of a competency progression that follows along with every company's comp plan. I love it because you're not limited to one company. You're helping everyone who's in this. And honestly, I find the information that I learn from you, it takes a step from people who are in direct sales. You know, you learn your company's program and what they want you. You know, they try to incorporate other training. But what you offer is that step above that is valuable for any business. I mean, any yeah. entrepreneur, the steps that we're learning through your organization really help with all business, I think, yeah. if you're online. Yeah. Well, I, I, um, so I sort of talked a little bit about, I, I skew heavy on direct sales, but when we talk marketing, marketing is the same for everybody. So yeah. the distinction for direct sales is that your delivery might be through a hostess, right. might be through a party, but in reality, anybody who has a boutique, anybody who is an Etsy seller, anybody who has a Shopify store, anybody who is a business coach, you have the exact same need in that you need to build your audience, establish credibility, build your build your trust, and guide people toward your offer right. by appealing to their pain points and problems that you can help solve. So it doesn't matter what you sell. Marketing is the same for everybody. Um, the only distinction for direct sales is that you have a company as your your wholesaler, right? Your product right. product fulfillment. And your delivery channel might be through um, hostesses, parties, and sponsoring. So, um, but in reality, marketing is the exact same. So, yeah. some of the key tips that we talk about, and we teach sort of the early side topics that I talk about, and this is the same with everybody, is um, no matter what you sell, you have to figure out how to create engagement online. You have to figure out how to create engagement with your community. And it's not who wants to join my team? Hey, girl, want to join my team? <laughs> Right? Are you looking for an yeah. opportunity? <laughs> oh my god! It's just not. So we have to appeal to what people are talking about or what problems they have in their life that we can solve. So, right. and I call that content. That's sort of my content strategy. It's we have to think about posting far less about business in order to create more engagement that people actually want to follow. We're providing helpful tips. We're providing personality. We're providing um, humor and fun. Things that create uh, familiarity not just with me but with the community itself part of the goal of any marketer should be to create a, to get your community to be sticky and what that means is I want you not only to engage with me I want you to engage with each other because if you're engaging with each other that means when you come online you're gonna want to check in and see what your friends are doing online not just I love that. what what your friends are doing because what's something that oh, sorry, what's something that you do um, purposefully that gets your community connecting together? Because I know you have a lot of things, but I know I do. <laughs> so a couple of things that are very very easy to recreate is to ask conversational open ended questions. So it's crowdsourcing ideas and opinions. So if you sell, I don't know, okay, you sell makeup, right? 
Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, let's use the example of, um, hey guys, uh, t what's your favorite um, glam night look? Or let's talk about ideas for um, weekend looks or share, share your opinions and ideas, right? Mm -hmm. What you're gonna see happening in the comments is that someone will share their opinion and there's nothing anyone likes better than sharing their opinion <laughs> with you, okay? Definitely. There's just not. Um, and as soon as they share their opinion with you, Somebody else in the comments might be like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea, I love that. And those two connection points right there is a new foundational relationship. Um, and it's so important, and this is sort of the part that a lot of marketers miss, they're so worried about getting people connected to them, the extension of that is getting your community connected to each other. I because, love that. Because it's then, truly what's happening is when people come back online, they're gonna wanna check in with what their friends are doing. Where do their friends live? In your group. Right. So when people come online, and we only really come online for a few key reasons, none of which are commercials and marketing. We, Our goal is um, we have to appeal to the reasons people come online, relationships, entertainment, and information. People come online to see what their friends and family are doing, do a little bit of light stalking, right? We all do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes heavy um, stalking. Right, exactly. But if I can facilitate those relationship connections in my own community, yeah, they're more likely to stay in my community because that's where their friends are. Number right. two, people come online for entertainment. If I can serve things that will make people smile, most viral content is rooted in entertainment. It's rooted in something funny, entertaining, that's made you smile, that's weird. We watch videos, we love memes, we love GIFs because they're funny. They're right. really entertainment. Um, we love engagement games. Why? Because they're funny. And then the third is information. Every one of us at one point or another has come online and asked our friends, who knows somebody who sells X? Right. Or how long do you cook a Thanksgiving turkey? Or what books are you reading right now? Or I'm, 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 I'm out of shows on Netflix. What are you binging right now? We ask our friends, we crowdsource information. So right. that we as marketers can simply facilitate those conversations. We're guiding our community to become sticky. And that's our goal. So they're not just listening to my marketing message, which I can sprinkle in a little bit of, you know, a little bit of seasoning on top of a community message. But the goal is if they're sticky with each other, they're likely to stay and still continue to listen to my message, which I sprinkle in occasionally as a promotional message. That's the key yeah. thing of where, you know, going back to March of this year, March of this year is when everything stopped, right? And I, we all had to pivot online. And I called it at the time. I said, here's what's going to happen um, for people who have large in-person businesses but not a lot of online presence. What happened in March is direct sales took an immediate nosedive. Like everything came to a grinding stop because there were no in-person parties. There were no in-person vendor events and everyone was like, well, what do I do now? Literally, <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. What happened was everybody had to pivot online. So we quickly threw together like, okay, how do you stand out online? How do you figure out how to be on Facebook? Because a lot of people who have part-time businesses, no matter what you sell, but you do in-person business, you do vendor events, you do personal appointments, you probably don't have a large Facebook following. You right. haven't your attention there. Well, guess what? We had to amp that up right away. We had to follow up with how do we follow up with all the people I've met online and invite them to my Facebook page, invite them to my group so I can start nurturing them in a new place. So we pivoted quickly to get people into the community thinking of how do I build community online and what does that even look like? So the strategy of how do I not only get them connected to me through content, content strategy, but connected to each other by asking, crowdsourcing questions, share your ideas. Where is everybody from? I mean, the biggest yeah. thing you can ask somebody is where are y'all from? <laughs> where y'all from, especially. <laughs> where, where, where are you from? Because what's going to happen yeah. in that kind of thread is they're going to tell you, number one, and they're going to look for people who are also from the same, same place. I know you did that recently and yeah. there was a lot of connection. I have to admit, I loved your um, Halloween scavenger hunt. It was pretty awesome. Uh, I've already told my business partners here, we've got to come up with something like that. It was so cute. Oh, was sweet. So that was a social scavenger hunt. So the, you know, my, what I try to do is I'm very much, I, I believe passionately in walking the talk. I will never coach anybody to do something that I myself am not doing or haven't tried. Right. 
So right. did, Katie, what you're referring to is what we did um, is Trick or Sweet. My business is called Sassy Sweet. So Trick or Sweet <laughs> is our fun little thing. And we did a social scavenger hunt where one of the goals for any business person is you want people to follow you on different channels, not just right. Facebook, but how do I get you over to Instagram? How do I get you to YouTube? How do I get you on Pinterest? How do I get you on my email list? Well, you have to create a little incentive for them to want to go there, right? Right. So if I want you to go over there, I'm going to create a little trail. Follow me in all the places. And there's going to be a prize at the end. We picked up dozens and dozens and dozens of followers on Trick or Sweet because the majority of my community is on Facebook, but we picked up people all around my social properties simply because I told them to go there because they were part of a scavenger hunt and they could find a prize. So, and they were easy, low risk, easy digital prizes, pick a free graphic, a tip, things like that. Yeah. It was a really fun way and it just took a couple hours. Um, and we had, a, we had a great time with it. Um, and uh, people were like, oh my God, this is like brilliant. brilliant. It's, it's such an easy concept, but we do it every single trick or, trick or treat. We do it around Halloween. We always do a social, social scavenger hunt. We've done, uh, this one was, um, I gave puzzle pieces all around uh, the social properties and you could put, to put the puzzle together to reveal a secret phrase. And the secret phrase was something you could submit to win a prize. Um, I also gave away like a free graphic or a tip or a blog mm -hmm. post that had some information in it. Um, in previous years, we've given away um, Scrabble letters and you mm -hmm. put them together to reveal a word. So yeah. you know, all kinds of little goofy things, but they're rooted in entertainment, right? That's what it yeah. is. In entertainment, there's a game, there's some natural competition, and it's value. It's not selling something. There might be you selling a lot of value in that. But there was a lot of it's what it's rooted in is value. So the more you can create that community with a healthy sense of competition and you know, shout outs and recognition and fun and silliness. I mean, I went live with I love candy corn, so you may have seen this, but I went live with a candy corn tiara on. It was ridiculous. Okay. I love it. But it's good though. It's great. That's right, the stuff that's you cool. want to do. <laughs> that's what online is about. Because when we're yeah. trying to stand out, when we're trying to stand out in a crowded field of people who sell the same or similar things, what's who's going to stand out? The one who's wearing a ridiculous candy corn crown or the one who is doing the exact same thing as every other consultant or marketer in your brand? Right. Right. Like, What's that weird girl doing with the candy corn crown? Right. So that's the ridiculousness of it. We have to be brave enough. And there's a lot of mindset in online marketing. You have to be brave enough to do a little something different that people aren't other people aren't doing. And that's really what builds your community. That's what builds your um, your reputation, your character. When people say, oh, my gosh, I love hanging out with her because she's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> because she's and that works, right? <laughs> Whatever your thing is, right? Be you. Yeah. Exactly. You have to be authentically you and you have to be brave enough to turn that up to 11, right? There's a little yeah. bit of like amplify your own personality. Now, I'm pretty much of a high extrovert. I admit it. Not <laughs> um, I'm a type A high extrovert. So, <laughs> but the idea of, you know, my goal is for not everyone to be someone different. My goal is to amplify the personality that you have amplify what's already you because there is somebody else out there like you who is looking yes. for you that's you may be quiet and motivational and be like you know i'm sort of subdued i'm going to dial that up and i'm going to motivate other people because guess what we extroverts can be really really noisy and there needs to be a place for other introvert marketers yes you can absolutely amplify that and find other people who want to be a part of your community and engage not just with you but with each other and that's the key thing, because then what we're building is we're building our social funnel. I'm, I, I draw funnels in the air with my hands. Can you see my <laughs> We'll get that. Yes, that's good. <laughs> I'm a big fan of drawing with my arms. So um, I'm, an, for, I'm a personality uh, types. Per, I love personality type analysis. I'm a extroverted thinker. So I'm a high extrovert, and I draw with my hands, and I talk best when I have an audience. So um, <laughs> I think out loud with an audience. Is like, I'm on a if you were in person, I'd be drawing on the whiteboard. Um, so when you're thinking about your social funnel, one of the biggest challenges that people that happen with people is they run out of people to sell to. Yes. And they don't know how to grow because all the people that you know are like, well, they hosted with you. They've already shopped. If they wanted to join, they joined your team. If they already bought what you have, and you're like, well, the market must be saturated. 
the market's not saturated. You just ran out of people to talk to. You right. ran out of 200 people that you already know, right? So our goal is to have to continually fish and mine and grow our value at the top of the funnel where the public is. And the public is on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, blogging, Google. Any, and people are looking on Google to the tune of 100,000 searches a second. They're looking for you. They just, you just don't know they're looking for you. And they don't know they're looking for you, but they're asking Google a question, for example. So I'll use me. I turned 50 this year. Um, I turned 50 in two months. I'm telling everybody because it's going to be a big party. <laughs> so um, uh, I'll use makeup, for example. Okay. Makeup for women over 50. Mm -hmm. Makeup for women over 50. I, I guarantee I will be Googling that at some point in the near future. I guarantee. Yeah, that's my market. That's who I market to. <laughs> but that's so exactly. There you go. But that's exactly what yeah. I'll be Googling for. Now, am I looking for Katie? Yes. But do I know I'm looking for Katie? Not no. Yet. I'm Googling. And so we have to think about, is my content in the places where people are searching for it so that I can capture their inquiry and guide them to the solution that is on my blog, on Facebook, in my email list, on YouTube? Can I guide them to where the solution is and then nurture them into my community to want to become a customer? Because I'm building no like and trust continually, building that relationship value and continuing to reinforce my my offering that serves them. So yeah, I'm passionate about this. <laughs> well, I love it. You can tell you're passionate. And I have to say from the other side of it, as a direct seller, I mean, that's been my primary full-time business for 18 years. And even prior to that, I was in a different business. The passion that you have to help other people succeed is huge. And you offer you really created a sense of community in in your Facebook groups and in your community. And so it shows people are talking about you all the time. Oh. And I think it's amazing how much you have grown. And not just this year. I mean, this year, what you have done to really pivot your business. It's, yeah. it's huge. And I feel like anyone who is out there trying to grow their business online, if you're a coach, you're out there searching you yeah. know, you need to grow. You need to find new people to market to. You can't yeah. just put your course up online and expect it to sell, right? There are things you want to do to create that know, like, and trust. Let me think about that for one second, because as yeah. a coach, as a coach, you're so Katie. I would say for you at stage five of what I call my social success journey, um, scaling your business includes not just the social funnel elements, but the additional expanded monetization potential indirect monetization, affiliates, partnerships, things that are gonna drive passive income. That's all part of scaling your business, which might include your direct sales business, but also mm -hmm. um, includes new ways to expand online and serve people directly or indirectly. So, you know, there's so much potential, and we jokingly call it seeing the matrix, is that as soon as you understand how um, social marketing works, you will see it everywhere because everybody who's offering you a free opt-in, a free, grab my free newsletter, mm -hmm. is going to get you into their email list, nurture you down to the point, building familiarity, understanding their story because they're going to sell you something later, right? So the, guy, the goal is, is that once we see the matrix, it's very, very easy to recreate it because, you know, as marketers, we're on the inside of knowing how marketing works. I had a conversation the other day um, with somebody about politics. Now, I don't want to tiptoe into politics, but I will tell you what is happening right now in the U.S. with the presidential campaign is digital warfare. Yes. It is completely being fought on the front lines of digital marketing. And as soon as you see that, doesn't matter who your candidate is, but I mm -hmm. guarantee there are people who are digital marketers who are grabbing domain names. They're doing redirects. They're doing targeting. They're guiding you toward key messaging based on pain point and value and solution offerings. It's nothing more than digital marketing. It's just amplified. But when we turn up that amplified message and we completely serve our ideal client first, right. we help our ideal client identify, yes, I do have that same pain point. Yes, I really am struggling with finding new customers or figuring out what my content is or my engagement is flat and I'm not sure why. When we figure out what someone's pain point is, 
it's a whole lot easier to guide them to a solution by offering an immediate quick win. Right. Then, what do we do? Guide them to our community because they you helped me. I want to learn more. Right. No, I love it. I love it. You have such a good grasp on this whole, the whole big picture. Here, I'll do with my hands too. <laughs> I love it. Hands. <laughs> all right. So you have um, your business, Sassy Suite is your your main business yeah, right well my company my company name is sassy suite my i have different um different products inside of my overall business i have a i have a premium coaching group i have video courses i have a um an online directory and blogging platform i have that help is high, that helps people get found on google um so i have a lot of little bits and pieces but my primary and i do private coaching so there's you know i have individual products um, but they're all rooted in um, getting found online and building a relationship and guiding someone into your social funnel to serve your audience and build your community and build your business that way. I love it. It's awesome. And you're in Phoenix and I know it's been really hot there. And it is. Yeah. <laughs> a little <laughs> we, were in the, we were in the pool. My son was in the pool last Saturday. Now the pool is getting cold, but it's still in the 90s. It's still it's still hot during the day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My daughter just started college there this year and she walking around. She's like, I'm taking showers twice a day. It's it's hot. So hot, but she's it's getting hot. used to it now. And I love it. I know you're a busy woman. You have so many great things that you offer to your community. I love your tips on creating that sense of community. I know um, Barb was saying she didn't know if it was okay to relate with each other when you're in it. Um, a group like that. And I think that's, that's huge. That's key to be able to just make and friends with each other. That. And this is, this is a little bit of a mindset shift as well. Okay. And I'm a big fan of talking about abundance mindset. Abundance is, you know what, I'm willing to share tips and value and with everybody. I'll go live and talk with anybody who's going to let me let, talk, right? right? I want people to be successful. I want people to do better online. Um, the opposite, especially in direct sales, is more of a fixed mindset. And that mindset looks like this. If I share this with you, you'll use it to compete against me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many of us know somebody, none of us, obviously, but some people, um, how yeah. many know somebody who would say, well, I can't share this with you because you're, you're not on my team. Right. Or right. use it to compete against me. Okay. Or other companies or companies. Yeah. And actually, other companies are the best people to network with because they're not directly competitive to you. Yeah. And that's and so there's two things um, I want to mention. One is um, when you start really creating authentic original content and you start focusing on your own engagement and your own growth, the first people who are naturally going to follow you are going to be other people in your own company because they want to see what you're doing. What are you doing differently? How are you getting this engagement? And that becomes your strategic advantage. So, and so that means if other people are sharing your content, I'm okay with that because that's your strategic advantage. Other right. people are extending your reach because they don't know any better and that's their strategic disadvantage. That's not my problem. So right. my abundance is share all my stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> because that's my, I've invested in myself. I've figured out my marketing. I've figured out my branding. I've got my message. I make original images. I'm all about sharing that because other people will extend my reach without even realizing they're doing it. Right. That's kind of a big thing. The other side of it. What was my other point? I had another thought. Uh, other businesses, I think maybe. Oh, thank you. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Thank you, Katie. We, um, when we're in um, specifically in direct selling, but if you're in a small business niche, the majority of your newsfeed are people who already sell what you sell. Because you're in all the Facebook groups, you're in all your upline groups, you're in all the brand groups, you're in all, you follow all the pages. Those are not people, your, your news feed is very small. Right. Your news feed literally looks like people who already sell what you sell. It would be very, very easy to be skewed and say like, oh my gosh, everybody must love this brand because that's all I ever see. When yeah. it really, it's just because that's who you happen to follow. There's an immense amount of value in joining community groups that are not about what you sell because you're like, oh my gosh, there's a whole other world of people, a whole other ocean I didn't even know existed. Right. right? I have to go figure out what's in the ocean because that's where all these other people are. And then networking with those other people who sell something non-competitive but has a great party process, has right. a great 
great engagement strategy, has a really great follow-up process, has a really great way of doing live sales. Fantastic. That's not competitive to me. I'm helping someone else be successful and change the industry from the inside out to bring more value and reputational value to direct selling. I'm all for it. So I challenge people to all the time to say, go look at your own newsfeed. How many other consultants, how many other people in your industry niche or brand do you follow in your newsfeed in Facebook or Instagram? Um, you would think by looking at it that everybody sells what you sell. Yeah. Yeah. In reality, they don't. So we have to we have to force ourselves into new communities where there are people who we can engage, socialize, and network with that actually would bring value to our business. And I can right. bring value to theirs. Not because they already sell what I sell, but because they don't sell what I sell. I love that. No, that's so true. Don't be afraid to get out there and share. And that abundance mindset is huge. And I think especially I find people in direct sales, if they're coming from corporate America, there's a whole different mindset. And when you get in direct sales, the more abundant, the more... Um, open you can be to sharing and learning from each other, the bigger it's going to grow. But that's right. not the natural propensity right. at all. The right. natural thought is, well, I don't want, I can't give this to you to compete against me, especially if you're in my local market, because we're all fighting for the same customers, hostesses, team members, eyeballs, right? We're fighting online for eyeballs. Right. So if I give this to you, you'll use it to compete against me. And here's me going, um, if I give this to you, you're going to extend my reach because my branding is on that image. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure your branding is on your work. <laughs> yeah, your watermarks on all your images. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, I really try to come at marketing from an abundance perspective, an abundance position mm -hmm. and really from the inside of saying, how do I serve value first? How do I serve before I sell? How do yeah. I create relationships and community before I sell? Because if the most valuable thing I can say to somebody is, Katie, even if you never buy from me, if I can help you be more successful in your business, even if you never buy from me, if I can help you with this one thing, then that's abundance. Even if you never buy from me, I still want you to be successful online. Even if you never buy from me, I still want you to feel confident in your clothing, in your business, in your makeup. I want you to be more confident in your, in your success. Right. Even if you never buy from me, I still want you to have those things. Yeah. That's abundance. And that's how we serve before we sell. And like that. That, as soon as we crystallize that, that nugget of value and truly believe it, not just say the words, but truly believe it, your entire marketing game will change because everything will be focused on, even that's if you never buy from me, I want you to feel successful. I want you to be more body confident. I want you to feel more, um, uh, I want you to, even if you never buy from me, I want you to remove toxins from your home and health. I, even if you never buy from me, I still want you to have a um, successful health journey. Pick your product. It doesn't matter. Right. right. If you never buy from me, I still want you to have this. I, I love still that. Want you to achieve this. That's abundance and that will change your marketing game. Completely. Surf before you sell. I love yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll have to share that quote. Uh, seriously, we'll stay here all day if you let me. I'm not I love it. I know. I could seriously listen to you all day. And I will because I have you bookmarked and I try and get in <laughs> one, one thing a day. So I love it. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You have so much, uh, just a wealth of knowledge. And I, it comes so passionately from you. I love it. If people want to connect with you more and learn a little more, how they can learn more from you or or. Yeah join your community, what would be the best way? And I will make sure we put this yeah. up. I have a workbook that it's sort of a, my free ebook that describes the social success journey that I sort of alluded to today that breaks down um, what I consider to be the path of success in online and social marketing. Again, it's, it speaks to direct sales, but it's not just for direct sellers. Yeah. Um, and you can find that at, so you can find me in two places. You can find me on Facebook. Brenda Stir and Power Social on Facebook. That's my business page. And then um, my workbook is uh, brendastir.com forward slash success dash journey. And I have that. I was going to say I have the whole workbook here too because <laughs> I've been working on it. But um, I will post that up there because I know I have the link. So I will make sure I put this up here 
so anyone can join. Actually, let me and just type so it. I talked earlier about the competency side of every company's compensation plan, um, what they're missing. <laughs> I'm pretty blatant. I love direct sales, but I will tell you exactly what direct sales companies do wrong. Um, they don't focus on the competency side, so I built it for right. them. So I love that. That's what the workbook really focuses on. If you're feeling these certain things, here's the things to focus on at this stage of your business. I love it because, you know, everybody comes at it from a different time, a different place and um, just figuring out where you are in that big picture and then where to go next. I love it. Okay. I'm writing this okay, down. You have that link, I think. Yeah. You have that link. Social. That, I think I just put that one up there. I have the link to it. I will find it and I will make sure I put that up there because I know I got that. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'll send you the, I'll private message you the, uh, I have it right here. I okay, have, perfect. There, there's the link to that. I just I sent you a private message with the link. Oh, on. awesome. Good. Okay. I will post that up there. And we are going to also put this video in um, YouTube. So then if anyone wants to learn a little more from Brenda, you'll have it there as well. Um, we are so excited that you were able to join us. Thank you. Um, you know, Charlie just said thank you and thank you. Um, Joy, thank you. You offered such great information. I appreciate you. Thank and you. Um, I know I'll see you more because I'm in your... I will see you like yeah. uh, Thursday. I'll see you today. I'll see you later today. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Brenda.